we're going to do a quick video here about how to set up a client portal search for your buyer prospects. That's what we awesome. talked about. Now, by the way, we just looked it up. The MLS does have advanced training that are actually good for CEUs. I, I, there's a buyer prospecting class that's a two hour CEU and that would be good for you to do. It's a free, there's a bunch of free classes there. So we're logged in the MLS. We're gonna assume everyone knows how to do that. And then you know that the main thing we use MLS for is searching for properties, whether you're searching for buyers or searching for sellers to figure out what their home value might be. So the sample I'm gonna do here is a residential search. Now we know you can email properties directly um, but we want this, we want to use what is the best tool in the MLS to stay in touch with buyers. That's called client portal. We'll get okay. to that in a second. Right now we're just in the search. Okay. Typically we're only searching for active and coming soon listings. Um, I don't really care to share with them the ones that are already under contract because we're not going to be going to see those properties. And right. unless they want to see sold so they can get an idea of market values, I keep it simple. Let's just do active and coming soon. So let's just say you have someone who only wants single families, no condos. So we'll do Summit County and in Green or Coventry only. And let's say, and then you fill in the rest of the criteria. They want single families, three or more bedrooms, uh, gotta have at least a bath and a half. So we'll do two plus total baths. Remember if it's at least a bath and a half, we don't wanna do two plus full baths because that'll, if something has a bath and a half, it won't come up in the search if it's two plus full baths. We go over this more in my buyer class where we really get into these criteria a little more and how to use and not use them. Awesome. Um, some of the other commonly used criteria are, you know, style. Maybe they have to be on all one floor. You know, maybe it's ranches only. Um, gosh, there's only 10. So, and, and most people have a price range too. And a lot of times they'll put a bottom limit on their search and a top, top limit. You can see the searches I've run in the past. Um, let's just say they don't want anything under a hundred because it's gonna be too much work, but their max budget is 275. So maybe you set them up for up to 300. Okay. Okay, this is just some basic criteria. We can go into how to choose these criteria more later. You know, when you only have seven matches, I wouldn't get too much more in depth with criteria because this is. You got to broaden it up at that point. Yeah, I want to send them more houses, not less. But then again, if they said, I don't care what style, now we're up to 27, that's still not bad. I would still be happy with that. I wouldn't necessarily try to narrow it down anymore. Now, if they say, hey, I don't want anything with zero or one car garage, you might say two or more garage space. You know, you can get more in depth here if you want. Here's 25 matches, let's run with that. So now from here, you know, you can click the results and then see the houses. This is where we're gonna get ready to set up our client portal for the person. What I recommend that you do, Ryan, is that you set one up for yourself, you know, in an area you're interested in. Maybe if you're okay. just interested in seeing solds too, you could go back into the criteria and you could say, well, I wanna see everything. I wanna see solds, under contract, everything. And now it's up to 141 matches. Um, you may also copy yourself on searches for your clients, and that's pretty effective too. I'll show you where to do that. Okay. All right, but anyway, let's go back in here. 25 matches. We know we could select all these and just email them directly to the client right down here. Okay, okay. that's good, but here's better. Even better is I click the Save button. So under the menus here, this is Actions right now. I'm going to click Save and see there's three options. I want the new auto email. As well. New auto email. That's what we want. Automatic. You don't want to have to do this every day. Right. Now you're going to start with creating a new contact because right now you probably have, have none. Um, you can also, once you have contacts, let's say that uh, Gail um, wants a new search set up and you, you know, you're going to, she's looking in two different areas now. So you might set up a second search. You can add a search to an existing contact or you can create a new contact. Brings up a simple screen here. I'll just put you in. Same. Yeah. You know what? I'm going to just, um, I'm just going to, you know how to do this. So 
Yeah. I'm going to cancel out of this and just put one under my name. There I am. Uh, and I'll just do test. Now, what I would do is I would make a real good subject line so that when these emails come in their inbox, you want them to open it. So you might say homes for Mike. Okay. Or you might get even more specific. Green slash Coventry homes for Mike. You know, that way they can tell that it was customized for them. It's not just some spam email. Right. Okay. There's a generic message that gets populated here. All the listing. And so I may have customized this. I'm not sure if this, if I've changed this. Um, it, this is standard. And then you want to have a signature. Um, you know, you might want to tweak this to fit your needs. You might want to say, you know, here's my cell phone or whatever. Like, like mine just has our office number, but you want to make sure that this gives them an easy way to reach back out to you. Right. Um, by the way, this is the welcome email when there's a recurring email. So the second time they get houses, mine just says this, you know, updated listings match your search criteria. Uh, a good thing to add here would be if you want to schedule a showing, here's my number. Okay. Okay. But for now, let's just leave it on the default. Here's where you can edit your signature. That's kind of cool. Um, some, oh, you can edit here too. Actually, there's, there's where you can edit. Okay. Here's a summary of the criteria. Here's the settings. I believe concierge mode, this is where you can actually like screen it first. Um, I don't usually use that. I just have it go out. Um, reverse prospecting. This is where agents can reach out to you and say, hey, Ryan, I noticed you have uh, someone looking for a ranch in green. I've got a ranch in green. I don't usually do that. I figure my client will look for that and tell me if they want to see it. Okay. Um, I don't usually check any of these, but you can mess around with these other features later. Here's where you schedule how often the emails go out. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sometimes ASAP is best, especially if it's a really narrow search. Like let's say there was only like two or three results and you want them to get the email as soon as a new result hits, um, you would click ASAP. Now the problem with that if there's 50 results is that they might be getting three emails a day from you and they're going to get annoyed with that and you don't want them to do that. That's why I usually do daily once in the morning. If you think that there's not that many, you might do morning and evening. Otherwise, every morning it's going to search, send your client the new results automatically. Awesome. Monthly is if you really, I mean, I don't know any reason you'd ever do monthly, but these are the two choices you'll typically use. Now, what's going to happen is you, once you hit save, that's it, man. You've just created a client portal email that's going to go out daily with all the results for me for Green and Coventry area. This goes out automatically. Now the cool thing is, if you go to your home screen, you can see I was just in portal looking at houses. Now you can go in here every day and what one of the things you should be doing is looking at your recent use contacts, recent portal visitors, and be contacting these, these people. Hey Cleo, it's Mike. I noticed you were in client portal looking at houses. Did anything pop up that you're interested in seeing? Got it? Yep. Now, under my matrix, you can go to contacts. And this is all the people I have in my client portal. You know, a lot of them, you can see they've never visited their portal. So that's why it's so important, you know, make sure they got the email, make sure they, you know, received it, make sure they're getting the listings. These people never even opened their portal once. Otherwise, you can see their last use. Some of these people are back from as far back as 2014. You know, and I, oh, I remember this guy, but there's others, you know, I don't even remember a lot of these, these people, they, they just fizzle out, but these are people that I could be prospecting. Mm -hmm. I could search. There I am. If, you know, once you get a bunch, now I can go in here and I can start editing. You know, I could say, oh, wait a minute. Uh, I got to edit that search I just created. Uh, where is it? It was test something, right? Yeah, test. Um, uh, actually, it's auto emails. Homes for, yeah. 
and here I can delete it. But I could go in here and change the settings, edit the criteria. So let's say I say, you know what, I want to bump the budget up to 350. Okay. Save it. Send it generates another email. Bam, I just saved it and sent it out again. Sweet. That's I'm gonna delete it though, because I don't I don't need more emails. <laughs> These are the searches I have set up for, for myself. You know, I like watching these things just for investment purposes. Okay. Saved searches, these are searches that you run manually. I don't even use this anymore. Okay, you got it? I got it, thanks, it's awesome. Okay, I will um, 